It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. <coughs> It starts with some beer, so you shouldn't have fear. Two garbage guys with facts, but they both still have tact. It's that time at last for the best damn podcast. It's Can Crusher Day. And welcome to our special edition of Can Crushers. I am Mark Martinez. Alongside Colin Maines making his return once again, and it's not an Woo! asylum event. Yeah, I feel a little out of water, should I say? You know, I'm so used to asylum pro wrestling, but I must say, imagine pro wrestling met my expectations. Yeah, uh, you you leaked everything I was going to say already, but <laughs> once we, <laughs> nice podcast. Well, See you a, later. A, go, great minds think alike, motherfucker. Like, you know. What? <laughs> Already oh. with the F bomb, <laughs> Jesus! All right, so this was uh, Imagine Wrestling's first event, and yep. we kind of—I don't want to say partner with them, but sponsored with them to do some things, and it was—it was awesome. We got there early, went to. By the way, nice plug for Al's Tavern, amazing food there again in Altoona. Oh God, it was awesome. I say I thought we were gonna have to take a nap in the car before yeah, those the burgers. show. Those burgers were unbelievable, by the way. Uh, so we get there, and we're standing outside the line, and calling if there's one bitch I'm going to have, it's what the hell were they doing with those lines? They had a line for this, a line for that, and a line for people that didn't have tickets. I'd say I felt like cattle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, if you bought online right here, if you bought VIP over here, well, didn't some VIPs buy online, you know, and if you didn't buy tickets at all over here, but like the sidewalk area was so small, yeah, they might as well have not even had a line. Just put us in line. Yeah. You had, you had a great list. You shuttled people in and out fast enough that it really didn't matter. Yeah. Then also, you know, like you said, the tickets were numbered, like where our seats were, like, I was seat 23 and Mark was 24, and people who didn't buy a ticket, you know, of course, they're going to get booted out of seats that aren't theirs. Right. So, that's probably one of my only gripes. I, I mean, we'll or, get or, into or, it. But. Or, yeah, I mean, in all honesty, my only gripe was, I, well, other than the fact of standing there having to piss my pants, you know. But um, when we first pulled up, the venue outside... It's kind of one of those, don't judge a book by its cover, but the, the cover looked rough. Yeah, and, then, and and I was like, oh, let's see how this goes. Then we got inside, and... My attitude changed. Two communication majors, you, you blew their mind by going, holy damn, two jumbotrons, you know, the TV was rolling, everything being blue kind of popped, I really like that. It reminded me of the old Smackdowns. Yes. Exactly. All right. they needed was a fist coming out of the out of the <laughs> the basketball. The basketball. Oh, I would say even just a little one, I was like, and it would have worked. So, like I said, we noticed the TVs. We noticed that, and uh, it was great. As soon as we walked in, we uh, ran literally ran right into Bob Backlund in WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah, nice little encounter we had with him. Yeah. Let's say, I do wish I would have been able to purchase his book, but however, you know, sometimes money's tight. Right, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know that, and we were doing very limited budget this time, but uh, next time, there is a next time, folks, we're already spoiling it, that uh, we will be bringing some money down and some more folks and to have some fun. Uh, so we milled around a little bit, talked to a few people, uh, great fans mm -hmm. at Imagine Pro Wrestling. And then we went over and talked to Manny Fernandez. and uh, Another, you know, should-be Hall of Famer. I'm not going to lie. That's the reason why I was there. I have met Bob. Bob's a great guy. But uh, once Manny Fernandez was announced, I was like, I need to go. You know, the Raging Bull, teaming with Dusty Rhodes, teaming uh, with Rick Rude. NWA legend. 
Yeah. Like one of the true pioneers of the NWA. Yeah. So that that's what got me to go. Um, nice little added bonus there for the guys. And then uh, the show started. Then they did not waste any time at all. No. At the beginning of the show, uh, Sebastian got inducted into the Circle of Excellence. Um, this is kind of, you know, with Imagine being new, Volume 1... This kind of probably closed the door on KC Dub, maybe. Yeah. But uh, I'd say I w- it almost felt like a type of ho- Hall of Fame sort of thing. Like maybe he's the first to be inducted into the Circle of Excellence. The next time we're there, maybe it'll be us. Maybe, or it could be Manny. Right. You know, or like you know, I I didn't, look at those. Two douchebags in the front row. They deserve the circle of excellence. And then there's us. Yeah, <laughs> like, really? Circle of excellence? No, then, please. Then I, uh, don't, don't let him have the microphone. Give me the microphone. And Dad, are you proud of me? Colin, he's not here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you not streaming this, Dad? Come uh, on. <laughs> so then they went to uh, all their videos that if you've been following... Imagine wrestling that have been posted on Facebook and so on. Uh, but it also, it helped break down the matches for the night. I kind of, I said it was long when we were there. It, it, did, it did feel long, but at the same time, I, I believe it was necessary. Yeah, it was nice. And the whole aspect of this was to have the Keystone Cup. You have Central yeah. Pennsylvania against West Virginia and Pittsburgh. We'll just put it at that. Yeah. Um, woo, Pittsburgh! Woo, yeah. Pittsburgh! Woo! <laughs> uh, big Antonio Tr- Brown trade last night. He went to the Raiders, by the way. Just to, That was last night. Yeah, side note. Side note on all of that. See, but, I, I did not even know. Yeah, that happened last night. We talk up, talked about it on the way down. But, uh... So it shows how the matches are going to break down, and you'll, you'll get to listen to once we go. Uh, Alright, we're ready for the matches. Yeah, let's see. So Lee Moriarty... Lee Moriarty comes out, and he's going to take on Chris LaRusso. And just a side note, as I always just randomly throw them in, uh, I've seen most of these guys at other uh, venues and everything, so I know the wrestling talent that is here in this building tonight. You recognize that there's one hell of a card. Yeah. uh, It's a short card, as you'll be able to see, but... It got put together well, and Cato and his group did a great job. They they definitely did. And uh, before we actually do get into the matches, I want to go back to the communication standpoint. They had no falters at all when it came to microphones, lighting, the TVs, live streams. They had two cameras set up. It was amazing. It really I, was. For their very first show, I was blown away as far as that standpoint goes. It truly felt professional to a T. Yeah. I'm one that would give, you know, if there's a glitch for a TV or this or that, I I wouldn't have even brought that up if there was a glitch on a TV or anything. My biggest concern at all these events, microphones. Yeah. And because, there was not an issue. Because if the audience can't hear you... There's no point. Right. Unless you're naturally like, you know, like Matt Bish. You know, I don't need it. You yeah, know. you can just scream. But overall, uh, like we said, the production value was awesome. It, uh, it was really awesome. was. For We got more than we expected walking right into the and, door. And they made, that, they made that venue, which outside looked like a dog turd. <laughs> they made it look like a legitimate... High stakes arena. Yeah, once we walked in, I forgot where we were. Yeah, I really did. No, I did too. Yeah. So kudos on that. All right, uh, Moriarty against Larusso, and right off the bat, uh, going to Pittsburgh wrestling all the time. Larusso is a bad guy, but in Altoona, he's he a, is he's a, a good guy. He's a hometown boy. He is yeah. a hometown boy. So that kind of threw me for a loop because uh, Moriarty is the same way. Yeah, he's always a good guy. Uh, heel face, I know, but we just um, so we had a change of the, uh, events for the night. Uh, now that we have seen all the matches, 
Probably best technical match. Yeah, but also probably the best comedy spots. Yeah. I'd say, I'd think so, because he, um, what's his name? Lee Moriarty. Moriarty. He really played off the crowd with his little shut-ups, you know. And it, it, he said it in such a way it sounded like Steve Urkel yelling shut up at you. Steve Urkel or, uh, I was going to say Kevin James, but it's not Kevin James. Um, Kevin Hart. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Hart. You know, yeah, he, he's about the size of Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. but uh, Probably kick Kevin Hart's ass. Oh, but. yeah, he definitely could. But, I mean, it, it was some truly entertaining spots. And, yeah, it was. Once they got the entertainment factor kind of out of the way, then the match. They went re- technical. Re- and yeah, it really picked up pace. And LaRusso gets the win with the super kick. Uh, like I said, I've seen LaRusso a lot. He's just an athlete. He's you know he's somebody that you could legitimately build a company around around this area. Yeah. So uh, props for them. Props for Mirardi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next matchup was David Lawless against Big Lenny, and this was all shtick. This yeah. match was all shtick. Uh, very gimmicky, yeah. There's dancing and shenanigans going on because Big Lenny is from, you know, the woods, the the backwoods of central PA. PA. I'd say one grape I wish would have happened that I wish his theme song would have come out being Cotton Eye Joe. I just think that would have fit him to a T. Better uh, than Country Boy or, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Just the way he was dancing. Yeah. I was like, Cotton Eye Joe. I was singing it in my head. And I was like, oh, that would have been Literally, good. folks. He was literally singing it in his head. Because <laughs> I saw his head nodding, and then he just started to hum. And I was like, <laughs> I know what's going on in there. But uh, the comic sticks where, you know, test of strength. You go one hand, I go the other hand. Yeah, or, or he's like, I didn't sign up to dance. And yeah. everything like that. They did a hoe down. Uh, great match. I have never seen Big Lenny before. This is actually one of the ones I have not. And I said to Colin during the match, I'm like, this guy looks like he just owns a garage, you know, down the street. And And this is what he does on the side. Yeah. This is what he does on the side along with making moonshine. So he's got the part down awesome. Lawless, seen him a lot. He is such the... The great heel. Uh, I'd say I, I really enjoyed his gimmick. Yeah. I, I thought for sure, though, when he first came out, he had a gavel with him. And I thought for sure he was that was going to come into play at some point. But, I don't know, if it would break, if he'd hit him over the head with it, then he wouldn't he's have gotta, his traditional... He's got to get another gavel, you know, week after week after week. Well, it'd week. be like Finley with his shillelagh. Like, you know, he always has it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Wow, how about bringing up a Finley thing early I, I, in the morning? I would say that was a callback. Like, right? God, I for, not that I forgot about Finley, but he just I never say, made this podcast. I would say, you're welcome, Finley. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a lot of Finleys in like four minutes, so we I'm, probably... I, I'm trying to bribe him. Finley, <laughs> we Finley quoted out there, that's for sure. Uh, so the match ends as... Big Lenny's on the top rope, you know, starting to pummel on Lawless. The ref had just got knocked in the corner, and Lawless low blow into a power yeah. bomb. One, two, three, it ties it up. El Tuna won, Pittsburgh won, more or less. Didn't, what, didn't Lawless, um, it might have been someone else. Didn't they use a chair? Oh yeah, that's right. This yeah. was the one. I, yeah, I, I, the other. Yeah, uh, oh, Lawless wow. rolls on the outside. Boo. Spoiler alert. Boo, <laughs> Mark. Uh, Lawless rolls on the outside, grabs a chair, hits the ring, tosses it to Big Lenny. It pulls a Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, falls down, and the ref turns around, and Big Lenny, beside himself. Yeah, what? He does hit the low blow, you know, power bomb, and he got the one two. He got a near fall. If I would read my notes better, <laughs> I'm such a minor. I would say, it's still early in the, in the morning, folks. But, I would say, yeah, he pulled an Eddie Guerrero, threw him yeah. the chair, and acted like he got hit. That spot, to me, it was both, I, I had mixed feelings on it. At one point, I was like, oh, that's a nice 
little tribute. I but, like uh, seeing that spot every so often. Really? I would say, yeah. but every time, the thing is, every time I do see it, I'm like, Eddie. Yeah, like, you oh, know, yeah. Like, I cannot not think of Eddie Guerrero. He right. Because he, he made that spot so famous. It'd be like watching someone else do a Tombstone Pile Driver or someone else do a Pedigree. And right. And you're immediately like, Triple H, Triple H, Undertaker, Undertaker you know. Yeah. Like a super kick, that's kind of everyone. Yeah. Everybody does super kicks anymore. Now, I would say, well, now if they got in the corner and started stomping their feet and tuning up the band, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, calm it, down. If like, you can't tell, HBK is definitely uh, Colin's favorite boy. I love you. Literally. <laughs> literally. Um, so, at the, the Keystone Cup's now tied one-to-one. But we, then uh, we have an out-of-cup match. No, first we have Backlund coming in the ring, and this, oh, yeah. this was pretty freaking impressive. He's 69 years old. Almost 70, yeah, and I thought he was 70. And for his age, he looks freaking great. He comes in the ring, and they're talking about, hey, how do you stay in great shape and everything? And then he does a tripod, he does a headstand where his hands are way out holding them up. He brings his leg, he's freaking flexible. He's doing in the air sit-ups, essentially. Like, other than his head and hands, nothing's touching the mat. Right. And we both look at each other and like, God, we are horrible. Like, there's no way in hell I could do that. And no, it was a... I can't do a sit-up on the ground. (laughs) I say I might have an asthma attack and just pass out as but, we eat three more donuts right now. But like, it was very impressive, and part of me made me want to see him actually have a match and get back in the ring because of how flexible he was. But then he had a little interaction with a wrestler who is nameless to me. Yeah, he was nameless. They didn't say, "Well, he just came out of the locker room and saying, hey, stop, you know, doing this. Let you want to go.'" And then all of a sudden, cross-faced chicken wing. Wow! I was say, yeah, Backlund really got on him. And, like, he was... He snapped. He was fast as hell. Like, I was like, Jesus. Like, it actually scared me how quick Backlund moved. And um, if there is one gripe with the spot, I wish that nameless wrestler would have actually been yeah. named in some way. Just or, give him his own props. Oh, hey, my name is Bob Jones, and yeah. I'm ready to take you on. Well, yeah, something like that. Or else just drag out the promo instead of coming out nameless and being like, you think you're tough? And then right. shows he's tough, runs away. Like, that's how quick that poor bastard was. It so. was. It was boom, boom, boom. And, uh, yeah. So now we come up to our third match in the Keystone Cup, and it is Justin Sane, another Altoona boy, against the Beast Man. Guys, uh, if you're if you're listening, you know that uh, I recently saw the Beast Man for my first time when we went to WrestleRex in Pittsburgh, and I can't get enough of this guy. I I think he is unbelievable. Once he got in the ring, I said, call and watch this, because I I now knew what he was going to do. He was just sitting there biting the middle rope, kind of drooling, and you're like, damn, he's he's into it. Yeah, I got to give him props for that. He did not break character at all. No, not one bit. He is a behemoth, by the way. We'll get into the, the spot that he did that about made us shit our pants, more or less. I felt bad for the other guy. <laughs> I was like, oh. He probably should have. <laughs> um, one thing that I actually liked, he uh, he kind of turned into Terry Funk for a minute. The ring girl was coming to get all this garb, and she actually took his bone yeah. as well. And he kind of like shot through the middle rope and doing his raw, raw, raw. And it kind of scared her that she just kind of like dropped the bone and ran away. So that, that reminded me of... Uh, Remember when Terry Funk, he had his cowboy hat on, and the ring attendant came. This is way before your time, but you should have at least seen I, it. I say, like, back, was it back in, like... The 80s. What, the 80s, yeah. when he was in NWA. No, it was no. a WWF one. Oh, when he, when he was with his brother? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He had his hat on, and the ring attendant grabbed his hat, and he was carrying everything, so he decided to put his hat on to carry it back for Funk. Funk didn't want anybody to have his hat on, and he just beat the tar out of this guy it was hilarious it's a look it up he, he was uh against the jyd i think 
But nonetheless, we're here to talk about Imagine. And Beastman, he got a reverse slam. I mean, he's he's agile for what do you think? 350, 400 pounds? Yeah, I would say definitely. <laughs> like, you know, now thinking back to him, he is a big, big guy. And for being as agile as he was, at one point in the night, we kind of brought him up. I don't think in the same context, but kind of like Bam Bam Bigelow, like a big man with great agility. Yeah, and the great agility came out when he did a cannonball into the corner. Oh my god, that was a rough spot to watch. That was the oh. corner right in front of us. Yeah, oh, that... I don't know... That, that, that made me cringe. I was like, oh Jesus. I don't know how Justin Sane is... Alive. Alive. I really don't, because... And then, then he proceeded to do his actual finisher... Afterward, I thought that wasn't the finisher. Yeah, like, are, are, you, are you sure? He hits him with a sit down pile driver, kind of like you said, Owen Hart to Stone Cold. Yeah, le- like a reverse tombstone kind of pile yeah. driver. Yeah. But after the match, we have a big announcement. I say, yeah, this this was pretty cool. And props to Imagine for setting up the next one already. Well, we didn't know that it was set up. We do now. But all of a sudden on the Jumbotron, D'Lo Brown. Brown. Um, I mark out, D'Lo's here! D'Lo is here! And I'm like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. And then it proceeds to tell us that, you know, he's challenging Beastman for the May 18th event. Which I look at Colin and I'm like, we're here. And, <laughs> no. Uh, no question about it. I would say... It's really cool that they got D'Lo, and like I said, that they set up the next one. But part of me thought he was there right then. He did. So, like, and this has nothing to do with, like, being disappointed and stuff, but the little kid in me was slightly, because I wanted him to come out right Right, when the Jumbotron hit, I'm like, oh, because I heard it, I didn't hear it, I was childish. Once he moved from the picture that was on the Jumbotron, and I'm like... He's going to come through that. He's going to, like, oh, and then he didn't. But it, it's, 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 it's it's fine. Yeah. Like, we understand why. And it's perfect. It sells for the next time, and uh, it's unbelievable. Um, so, as he said, like, Beastman got the win. So, now Pittsburgh, West Virginia, South Side <laughs> is up 2-1 to one over Altoona. Now we have a match that is not part of the Keystone Cup. And... This is why I'm here. Yeah. But uh, no disrespect. This is why I ended up being disappointed. I know Manny's old. I say, yeah, this was probably the more. This is where our nitpicks will come. Yeah. This is this is why. Yeah. So you have Enigma that we've seen uh, a few times. I say we, we first saw him at the first asylum. Yeah. At least that's where I saw him. Right. And he's going to take on Manny Fernandez, the Raging Bull. Like we said, non-tournament match. Manny does get the win. He does. We'll just throw it out there like that. But Manny tried for a drop kick earlier in the match. and I think, I think he hurt himself. Yeah. And then the match ended up being like chop. And then Manny ended up like laying on the ground for a little bit in uh, two or three times. You know, it was... In like a headlock. You know, and the traditional... Raise the arm, it falls. One, two. My issue with that is they did that way too much. Yeah, they like, ended up doing that three times. Like three times. And each time, it was dragged yeah. out. So, like, you know, that that's my big nitpick for it. But that's it. That's the only thing we really have to say. I say, I give him credit for hitting the flying the, elbow. The flying burrito? Yeah. Yeah. So that looked good, and then after the match, he uh, he grabs the mic, and this is Classic. probably one of our favorite moments. He gives props to Pedro Morales that passed away this year, Bundy. You know, he brings up all the all the deaths that there's been. You know, there's been like six or seven already this year. Yeah, uh, big two, not so big names, but at least we know them. Um, he just gives props, and him and Bob have a moment. Yeah, and. That was awesome. You know, that right there was like, yeah, these guys, they know each other. You know, it's just, yeah. it's great. 
it was a very classy move. And all my respect goes to the legend. Like I said, nothing against his wrestling ability. It was more or less, you know, age. Yeah. Oh, but he moves better than I do. Oh, I God, mean, yeah. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was not even a question. That was, like, thrown right under the bus. So, like, at, without a doubt. <laughs> like, <laughs> remember that when you need some place to stay again <laughs> in two weeks. Uh, Callie, do not make him food anymore when he comes here because uh, he oh, is no on. longer. These, these donuts you made were fantastic. All of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> we call her Krispy Kreme. <laughs> um, next up is probably our favorite match of the night. Uh, Gannon Jones uh, against Big Time Bill Collier. And right off the get, you know, this match is locked and loaded. It gets down and dirty. I would say, yeah, there was... <laughs> No time waste. It just, it turns out to be, you know, a classic main event match. Uh, not main event, main event match, but this is the main event, the tag team. Um, these guys are great. This was my I, favorite yeah. match of the night. Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. I only have one gripe of it, and it is. I know what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say, because I remember the moment it happened, I was like, oh, like, you know. Like, if he didn't do this, I would have been like, this was a six-pack yeah. match. And then, um, for the Can Crusher scale, he was it in a hold on the ground, and he, like, broke character for, it was only a second to get the crowd up again. And I'm, you know, being Mr. Actor that I am, you never break character. Yeah, right. uh, unless 100% necessary, and that was not... Yeah, 100% necessary. I know exactly. He had him in a scissor lock, uh, uh, you know, around his ribs. And right before he was, like, almost dying, Collier was almost dying, the pain, because Gannon Jones Jr.'s legs are so big, this screaming. And then he sits up, and he looks directly at us, and he's like, come on! And then he goes back into being in pain, and I'm like, oh, at least sell it like the old Hulk Hogan. Yeah, like, you know, come on. Yeah, and yeah. Like, you know. But... <sighs> That, that that is so minuscule though, but we noticed it. That's I, it. I would say, well, like it's hard for you know fans like us who haven't been with professional wrestling since we were young, right? You know, to not notice something like that. So for the hardcore fans, I suggest don't do that. But that that's it. Other well, than that, I do have one other gripe during oh, this oh, match. Oh, no, never mind. I mean, let, let me track that. This has nothing to do with the match. This is a. Cato review type of deal thing. Um, I loved what they did with the referees the whole night. They had great polos on that said, imagine, you know. Yeah, they looked very professional. They spun it another way. They had their, you know, packs with their earbuds in so they can talk to backstage. They can listen to backstage and everything. But the referee in this match had one added bonus. He had his cell phones. Yeah. His iPhone XZD to the max <laughs> stuffed in his back pocket that looked, everybody can see. It looked like it was about to fall out. I could have ran up to the ropes if I so wanted and grabbed it. Yeah. So it, it, if we're gonna nitpick, in you know that's all we're really gonna nitpick. It doesn't matter because he didn't do anything in a match with it. You know this that or other thing. Yeah, but, he, he didn't take a selfie with him in the scissor lock. You woo! know. Uh, so if you're gonna keep it professional, don't bring your phone to the ring. Other than that, again, this match is unbelievable. Uh, Gannon lost as he hit some moon. He missed the moon salt, and after as hard hitting as this match was, I was shocked to see it won by a roll up. Yeah, I mean, all the spots were very tight. Like they did not give each other time to breathe, like at all. But yeah, the roll up kind of surprised both me and you. But at the same time, now looking back, I couldn't have seen it the way the match itself was. I couldn't have seen it ending. Well, if Gannon would have won, I think he would have needed to win with pulling in the tights or something to show that he's that bad. But uh, a spear, you know, to knock him out. or yeah. So that brings us to what we're dubbing the main event because it's 2-2 two to two now, Pittsburgh against Altoona. Which, Let's if you say th- the, the cup is literally on the line at this, this point. Yeah. yeah. Which we keep saying Pittsburgh and Altoona, 
Um, Altoona, uh, the curve, is actually part of Pittsburgh's Pirates baseball organization, so they really wouldn't hate each other. No, that's a different story, but nonetheless. Um, yes, the cup I is... I say, I'm from Sheffield and I hate Ridgeway. Well, oh, I, and, I, and I don't even know where Sheffield is because it's a little freaking road in the middle of the woods. All right, you want to go? Like, like Big Lenny doesn't even want to go to Sheffield. That's how bad it is. He looks at the map, sees a shit stain, and is like, "Oh no!" Like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm gonna get by that. All right, so Jimmy the hippie. Uh, did you know how much he weighed? Do you no. remember how much? Oh, yeah, he said like three thousand some grams. Three thousand. I, I, I was like ounces. I was like. That's such perfect. a perfect pun. Right, like, and I'm like, oh my god. Well, for a second I was like, I thought they were going to say 3,000. I'm like, they're clearly thinking of Beast Man here. <laughs> but like, but, and then grams. I was like, okay. Ounces. Ounces, sorry. Yeah, ounces. I don't know why I keep saying grams. Grams does sound better. The whole drug reference. Yeah. Like, but ounces is good too. Uh, but still. It worked with his character. And it, as, as they were saying, he was sitting in the corner. You can't seem to do it, but he was nodding his head like with pride. He's like, uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Like, the only other thing, uh, if he lives at like 420 you know, Mockingbird Road or something, <laughs> <laughs> right next to the Adams family. Or the if, if he was born on April the 20th, right. you know, like. Uh, good stick. I really liked it. Um, he's going to take on the other half of the main event, Duke Davis. The, the metahuman, I didn't know we called Duke Davis the metahuman. Uh, Duke was actually, I don't know if we mentioned it, involved in the last match. As was uh, Hippie involved in the last match, too. He came out kind of yeah. with big, big time Bill Collier. So they were already lingering around the ring as I'm losing my voice already. <clears throat> uh, so they just swap. Gannon's out and Collier's out. Duke and Hippie are in. In this match... Itself doesn't last long. long. No, and I was actually surprised, and you were too, because you were like, "This is our main event," and I was upset about this. So I'm like, because I know Duke, uh, he's a big mf'er. That he's a big guy, and Jimmy is not. So I'm like, oh man. So we looked at each other instantly, like, well, maybe the Gannon call your match should have been the main event until, yeah, and then. All of all of El Tuna comes out. All of Pittsburgh comes out. I say, and then it turned into kind of a lumberjack match. Yeah, for a little bit before it was announced. And I kind of this is just me being selfish because I've never seen a battle royal in person. This is unbelievable. I say, How old are you? I, give me a second. Let me look in the mirror. But like uh, for all the Raw Smackdowns, the Revival, ECW, you know, Asylum. Everything, like, every show that I've ever been to, I have never once seen a Battle Royal. And that's unbelievable. Yeah, and Mark did say to me, he's like, it's going to be a Battle Royal, call it. And it looked like it was going for that. I thought, all right, they're going to, whoever wins the Battle Royal, whatever team member of the, you know, ten people in the ring win the Battle Royal, wins the cup. And I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then it's announced that it's a five-on-five tables match. Which is... Brilliant! Yeah, every time a table is mentioned, I'm immediately in my head screaming, d <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> what? Get the, the tables! Head. Like, you know, taking a one-way trip to Dudleyville. Dudleyville. Uh, I'd like to go there one time. Just not to stay, though. I, 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 their table factories must be flourishing. Right? <laughs> it's like Blair. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so all hell breaks loose, and... I'm not saying there's no rhyme, no reason to this, but it's a it's a spot fest. It it is all over the place. Which at the same time, I was normally I wouldn't be fine with, but I was fine with it. The way this ended, yeah, was the, the perfect. Way, the way it ended, like was perfect. Like we had already seen everybody, right? So we know who everybody is. I think that's the thing. If that would have happened in the beginning, I could have cared less. Right. I, I like what you said there. Um... Everybody hits their finisher. Uh, yeah, and then everybody ends up on the outside. And Ex- then uh, the, the poor, the poor crowd had to get moved out of the way. <sighs> yeah, and I gr- understand. Gr- granted, I appreciate you taking concern for your customers, right? You know what I mean. And that was very professional on your part. Still, it was kind of you obvious what was going to happen well then. and like you know as hardcore fans we we like to be surprised 
Right. We knew immediately what was going to happen then. Yeah. It was still a very cool spot. To see everyone from Altoona jumping out onto everybody from Pittsburgh, West Virginia, to have Collier do it last. And he's big. And he flies well. He really yeah. does. He he's, a, he's another very agile big man. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've seen him a lot before. Some of his battles with Jimmy Nuts in, in Pittsburgh were unbelievable. So... Uh, it ends up with Lawless on the table. After he got knocked around a little bit, you know, Collier and uh, LaRusso actually end up putting Lawless on the table. And Jimmy goes up. Jimmy the Hippie goes to the top rope and just squashes him through the table. Altoona wins Central PA, whatever you want to call it, uh, wins the Keystone Cup. And it was a great way for Volume 1 to end. It, it really was. It it ended on a very, you know... High note. High note. <laughs> yeah, literally. But um, it was really cool. That table spot on poor Lawless. Yeah. That just... I mean, we couldn't see... We saw most of it, but we couldn't see the actual impact with the floor because of where it was in the ring. Or outside of the ring. But it sounded horrible. Yeah. It like, sounded like, like Lawless. Like, it sounded like his neck snapped. Right? So, we do have a little bit of an interview that we got backstage with uh, owner, promoter, Ken Downs, Cato, whatever you want to call him. Let's say, former wrestler. Yeah, former wrestler. So, we'll send you to that, then we'll come back, we'll do our recap of this, kind of, our, our voting and how uh, we break it down. And then we have one more thing that we actually want to talk say, about. Uh, a movie review of Fighting With My Family, the story of Paige. It's pretty cool. So we are backstage with owner, promoter, Ken Downs of Imagine Pro Wrestling. Ken, first and foremost, what a hell of a show tonight. Thank you. Feel free to call me Cato. All my friends call me Cato, so feel free to call me Cato. Um, thank you. I, we, we was well satisfied. Um, we prepared... For the worst and hope for the best, and I think we really did get, for the most part, the best. But when you have incredible talent, you have guys like Jimmy the Hippie, Bill Collier, Duke Davis, Gannon Jones, the list goes on and on, Chris LaRusso, Lee Moriarty, David Lawless, Big Lenny, all these guys here, the Beast Man. When you have that card and you add on top a little bit of season, like Bob Backlund and Manny Fernandez, you can't help but expect good things. So we're really happy. I was going to say, for the card that you put together for your first show of Imagine Wrestling, how did you do that? How did you bring all that wonderful talent together? Well, I've been, I've been wrestling for a long time, and uh, about half these guys I actually trained, between Big Lenny and Bill Collier and Jimmy the Hippie and Chris LaRusso and Justin Sane and, and Lucio DeVere. I trained all these guys, so um, that helps. Yeah. And then... Uh, <laughs> You combine that with, you know, working a lot in Western PA and running into really good guys like Duke Davis and Gannon Jones and Lee Moriarty, like these guys, David Lawless. Like you run into these guys and, and you know, you're, if you're lucky enough to spot talent, you can see that these guys are phenomenal. And, you know, half of this card should be on television. I, I honest to God believe that. They're, like, they're so big and so good well, and I, so naturally gifted. I was to say, after tonight, I believe it. So um, that's part of it. And then, uh, you know, it really isn't my first rodeo. I ran KCW in Altoona for seven and a half years, so I have a little bit of experience, and I've I've been able to draw off of the mistakes that I made previously to hopefully put on a better product going forward. And this was volume one. Yeah. Uh, How long, I know this is an open-ended question, how long is this chapter? How long is this book you're writing? Is it Imagine for Infinity? It's Imagine for as long as people are enjoying it and are engaged. Um, I think... You know, initially we had a plan of two shows to see if people were going to be coming to the shows. But, I mean, it seems as though people had a good time tonight. Uh, the crowd was really, I mean, no matter how good the talent is, if you don't have a crowd that's as loud as what we did tonight. It was ruckus tonight. It, it really was. was. It was, uh, if we don't have that, then, you know, it's all for nothing. But, um, boy, the, ta- the crowd was just, oh, it was, they, they were fire tonight. It was spectacular. But um, that book may lead to a sequel. Night. Oh, I like that. I, I like that. So let's talk about. You've already announced that May eighteenth is your next show. Yeah, absolutely. And you shocked me as you announced 
D'Lo Brown's going to be in freaking Altoona. That's right. D'Lo Brown, former Intercontinental Champion, European Champion. Uh, we're excited. We're excited to have D'Lo come to town. He, uh, you know, was watching the show, cut a, cut a little promo on the Beast Man. If uh, you saw Beast Man, amazing athlete, wild man, 400 pounds. Uh, I can't imagine how great it's going to be to see D'Lo versus versus the Beast Man. I'm sure it's going to tear that up. Say, personally, I want to say bravo for having something set up for the next time. It gives the fans something to look forward to and makes them, me personally too, want to come back. Well, like I said, I, I, I learned from my previous mistakes and I think this show uh, sort of reflected that, you know, um, good wrestling can happen on the independent level. If you have the right talent, I mean... I, um, some like, of the, I'll like, stop you for a second. Some of the greatest wrestling happens on the independent level. And don't knock anybody for that because it's amazing. Because some, some, of the, some of the worst wrestling happens on the independent Oh, you want to plug Cato Reviews as well? <laughs> <laughs> some of the worst wrestling happens as well. But, um, I mean, this show, uh, like, like everybody's been slapping me in the back, telling me how great it was. This show was, was 10% me. Uh, it was 90% the talent, 90% the crew. Like, I, I just, I, I'm like a captain that's steering the ship, but if everybody else isn't doing their job, that ship doesn't move, and, I mean, I, I'm i blessed to have a great team, Jeremy and Mike and Donnie and, and Katana and, and Orchid, like, they, like, this group has worked so hard to make this happen, so I'm, like, like, I'm naming names that nobody that listens to this is going to know, but to me, they're really important. Doesn't matter. No, and, doesn't matter. And, and, because they, they have made this happen, because I, you know, I ran shows for seven and a half years. Yeah. I left, when I left. Stop running shows. I swore I'd never run another show. Like I swore, like I was burned out. And these guys got me motivated and got me excited. So that was going to be did. my next question. How did they rein you back in? They, because I remember you saying that even on your Cato reviews that you can still see on YouTube, folks. Yeah, I. Uh, they just they just uh, beat me into submission. I don't know how better to describe they, they, it. They lit a fire under your ass. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's it. I, I'd say maybe beat me into submission is a better thing, but. Um, whether it's wrestling or life in general, if I decide I'm going to put myself into it, I throw myself at it. 110%. Right, right. So, And that's what we did here. Um, those guys motivated me to stay focused and throw myself at it 110%. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with the night. So, uh, there, There's one thing I wanted to ask you. You said you promoted before, and clearly you wrestled before. But I do, I think it was very classy of you to take a back seat and let everyone else put on a mm-hmm. show. Is, was there a part of you, or is there a part of you that always wants to get out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to be in that ring. I want to wrestle. But at the end of this month, I will be 44 years old. And uh, at this point, I can't wrestle at a level that I did 10 years ago or even 5 years ago. And I love wrestling so much that I don't want to insult the business by stepping in a ring whenever I can't perform at a level that I feel like is satisfactory that if I was a fan, would I pay to see me? Ten years ago, absolutely. Even five years ago, yes. Today, um, I'm not. I'm not sure. People tell me yes, but like I have eyes, and I can see. And 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 maybe I'm. I can still do it better than uh, guys that aren't as good. But it's not like I can't. I can't be Bill Collier. It's not I, where you want to be. It, it's exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's not where I want to be. I'm, I'm, I was happy. I was happy. Like, I can live vicariously through other guys. Yeah. I'm fine with that. This, this is perfect for me. I will, I will manage a show, and the show is going to run smoothly because I'm not having to worry about my match and what I'm doing. Last thing, besides the teaser of d do you have anything else you can tease us for May 18th? Well, um, you saw our, our last three matches. We had a five-on-five. And that sort of sprung from Bill Collier and, and Gannon Jones and then Duke Davis and Jimmy the Hippie. Um, so we're going to have the main event. Um, not the literal main event, but the tag team, the main yeah. event. Duke Davis and Gannon Jones against the homegrown heroes of Bill Collier and uh, Jimmy the Hippie. Cato, thank you for some time on Can Crushers. We'll be in contact for sure for the May 18th show. And have a great night and great success tonight, buddy. Thank, yeah. thank- Thank you, man. Awesome show. Thank you, guys. So, great interview with Cato there. And how about this? He says he was only going to possibly do two shows. This has to be more. This There's got to be more based, imagined. Based on the reaction from the crowd, which I don't know if I mentioned this. At first, I was worried about the crowd. Uh, not us, but like I was like, I wonder how into it they're going to get. They were into oh, it. Oh, yeah. They, they did not waste any time. And 
from the, the positive feedback that he received, not only from us, but from everyone else, yeah, he has to do more than two. This has to. I mean, you have D-Lo coming the next time, which is just going to lead into more. the next time, more. I'm going to be honest, I'm worried about getting a ticket. Like, Right? Oh, no. Don't worry. I was saying, wait, wait, whoa, 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 I, 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 I forgot. We're kind of a big deal. <laughs> we're we're, we're... a <laughs> Rushers Wrestling Podcast. We'll have you covered. And uh, I want to get more of us to go down. We just... Uh, oh, because I was going to say, the English professor... Would enjoy would, it. Would have loved it. Pat would enjoy it. Soup. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get more of us to go down. And... Uh, yeah. We're excited. So let's do our grading, and then we'll talk into... The uh, the movie that we want to talk about because we really haven't got to discuss this. Me and you, you're the movie buff of yes, you know, you're the Scorsese uh, of the Can Crushers. Thank you, but so, um, well, I was gonna say as far as the ranking goes, wait, like, tell them how we rank. Out of six, six, we rank out of six packs. Yeah, out of because we're beer. We also drink beer, except I, Sunday mornings when we're already hungover. <laughs> I would say, and then it's six coffees. It's six it's, coffees. Yeah. So okay, so I would uh, give this. Five beers out of six. Like, I would, like, even, I'd go five and a half, actually. I couldn't quite finish the six. Because I was so impressed for their very first show. I'm excited to see them go up from here. Like, it was very well put together. The talent was magnificent. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's little nitpicks. That's the only reason I'm going five and a half. And as Cato said, the talent, just getting to meet them and training half of them, more or less, uh, that's how he had this show in his pocket. Now, going forward, you know, reaching out to D-Lo to have him come. Can, did I say D-Lo's coming? Yes. Can yeah, you yeah, tell yeah, yes. I'm excited about D-Lo coming? I'm just the nation of domination. It's D-Lo Brown. Um, I give this, like, five and a fourth. Uh it's great. It really is great. You know, have I seen a six pack match yet from anything that I've gone to? Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, five and a fourth, you guys did an amazing job as volume number one. And I can't wait to be more I involved. I say, if here comes my movie re- references, if this was Star Wars, I hope the next one's Empire Strikes Back, which is considered. One of the greatest sequels. And that's that's the horrible thing. I have no idea what the hell that means because I'm not a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> no, nerd, I was can saying. you can you not give us a wrestling reference? Like, is it the? Oh, okay, all right. If I had to say this was WrestleMania one, this I hope the next one's WrestleMania three. Oh, you didn't like WrestleMania two? Not really. No. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know I, I I did and didn't. No disrespect to all the great talent on it, but three. Was such a pop culture phenomenon right. at the time, like it was if big, bigger than one. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, thank you, Imagine Wrestling. Thank you, Cato. Yeah, thank you so much for having us, man. Thank you to all the athletes and talent on the roster. I mean, everybody was wonderful. Uh, the only person I'm not going to thank is Jason Dixon that I thought there because it's Jason Dixon. <laughs> I don't need to thank no um, uh, humor. Uh, so let's move into a little bit of, you know, we have about 10 minutes left before, you know, we hit our, our time. Um, let's talk about fighting with our, fighting with my family as we haven't been on together in a while. Uh, you, yeah. you run with it first because this is your, so for those of you that don't know, yeah. I am quite a nerd, the, I guess, <laughs> Say, nerd, movie buff, whatever you want to call me. And I'd love Films. I love watching them. I go to the movies all the time. But I also love, as you can tell, professional wrestling. And when those two worlds rarely intersect, I'm I'm there instantly. The only other, the last time I saw a movie about professional wrestling was The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke in 2008, which was amazing. It it was awesome. I would say I don't know how he didn't. He was nominated for an Oscar for playing Randy the Ram, but in my opinion, he should have won. Because he it described every you know great legend who you know has fallen on hard times. Wrestling. That's why he didn't win because wrestling is such a taboo. And I mean this nicely. You're in a corner. I mean the, the corner is huge anymore. Yeah. But you know, out of society, we're all still. And I, I'll continue to say it because I love the word nerds, outcasts, or whatever. But guess yeah. what? I. 
it's my family, yeah. and I'm going to defend each and every one of you guys. For sure. And also, now this was the next big movie, and that, that was over 11 years ago since The Wrestler to come out about professional wrestling. And it was produced by none other than the great one himself, The Rock. And he really returned to his roots here by telling the story about WWE superstar Paige and her fight to get to the wrestling business. And I absolutely adored this movie. It was full of, you know, heart. It was full of heart. And one thing I was really shocked, how funny it was. Yeah, I didn't, when I saw the previews and everything, I was I was dead set that I wanted to watch it no matter what, but it was very, I don't want to say dry, it was just informative on the preview, so I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter, I'm going to watch it. I thought it was going to be more of a documentary or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and, and wrestling has a ton of great documentaries that come out all the time, like, you know, name a few, Jake the Snake on Netflix or Andre the Giants on HBO, you know, Ric Flair's 30, 30 for 30, 30 you know? woo, woo, I would say. But for an actual movie, you yeah. know, like a big time movie to come out and was awesome. And and forgive me if I pronounce her name wrong. Florence Pugh, I think is I think her last Pugh, name. Yeah, I say played Paige, and of course they're not going to look exactly alike. But, she looked pretty close. Though. Yeah, but like for you know, I watched an interview with them two sitting side by side promoting the movie, and of course you could tell the difference then. Right, but like. For the movie goes, it was pretty awesome. And you had, you know, Vince Vaughn playing kind of an out-of-character, not-so-comedy role. Right. He was he was still he funny. He was good, though. He was he still was funny as the coach, but there was some dramatics there. Yeah. Like, um, when he's telling her brother Zach, you know, you're not going to make it. That was a rough scene to watch. Yeah. and But then, you know, you had Dwayne, jo- Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing himself, which I thought was kind of... Fourth wall breaking, but kind of cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that Rock was there. We had a couple other cameos, too, by... Yeah, the Big Show, Sheamus, and very, very briefly, The Miz. And you know who AJ Lee was, right? Yes. I, I think they could have gotten anybody else to play AJ Lee. I would say, it was a small part, but I'm not going to lie. I was, I too, I was like, that's not AJ. Like, no. Yeah, like, uh, because AJ, to me, was... Very distinctive in everything, you know. So I was able to identify her, and no disregard to the actress playing her, you know. Zelina Vega, yeah, the the uh, actual wrestler from WWE. Yeah, there, there, there's there should have been, you know, someone else. Yeah, I just think it's somebody else. I mean, it was just to help do the moves or something in the ring, but uh, that that. Was so far fetched from AJ Lee, like and, and like said, even her costume annoyed yeah. me. And this is such a small part, but still, it definitely, you know, could have been better. I mean, that's truly one of my only flaws of the movie. And because, um, like I said, it's really funny. It's really heartfelt. There were a couple moments where I started to tear up. Not knowing the whole story of Paige before Paige became Paige, I didn't really know that she was about ready to quit or she just needed a break to go home and get, like, re-energized. I was shocked about that. I didn't even realize that she had changed her look. She changed herself to try and be To be, be a more, blonde. To be blonde and tan, yeah. you know, and... Fake, she, e- she, fake Eva Marie. Yeah, literally... And uh, but I also didn't know her how entwined her family was in the professional wrestling business. See, I don't know if you had knowledge of that. Well, not I didn't. Not prior, but since recently, uh, watching Rise, the women's wrestling, and watching some of these other indies, her mom is actually over here a lot anymore. Sorry, at night doing shows for Rise and Shimmer and things like that. That uh, she's pretty badass too. Yeah, well, in the movie, she seemed badass. And uh, Nick Frost played her dad, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Yeah. Um, But regardless, I was watching an interview with Nick Frost and Paige, like, herself. And she said, you played my dad to a T. Like, that was my dad on screen. Nice. So, like, I, I just hearing that interview, you know, it makes me feel like I saw the real guy. Right. You know? Perform and like there were a ton of great moments, such as when you know, when she's at WrestleMania 30, 
Yeah, and she and, gets a call. And, the, you know, the, not to spoil anything, but she has another meeting with The Rock. I, if there is one gripe with the movie, I would have liked. I would have liked them to break the fourth wall, and I would have liked to have seen none other than Vince McMahon himself. No chance. Yeah, no, no chance. No chance at all. No. But, no, seriously, I would have really enjoyed... Oh even, yeah, just Vince, even a, Vince being there, yeah. But it was Rock's movie, so I understand why. Well, I, I think that's how it went at first too, because he he Rock did kind of keep an eye on her. Yeah, even though he was like still doing movies and stuff like that. Whenever he'd come back, he'd like check up, see how she's doing. Well, I did not know this. Rock actually saw a documentary, a wrestling documentary, while he was filming a movie in England made about her family. Wow! Like they, he was flipping through the channels one night, and there it was. And the documentary was called "Fighting with My Family," like what the movie's named after, and it was about Paige and her family. And it just so happened at the time, like I don't know what if you would call this destiny or whatever like that, but he met her, like you know, and you know the same thing. Like the only thing that was not in the movie that I guess was in real life was. She was like, oh, I'm such a huge fan. I know who you are. And Rock went, I know who you are. Can you imagine having The Rock say, hey, I know who Can Crushers podcast is? I'd faint. Right. right. Now, like, I, you'd hear a thud on the ground instead of me sneezing. <laughs> but, I kind of edited it out, by the way. That was just an inside joke. Uh, but, there was snot all over my table. Oh, God. It was one of my more embarrassing moments. <clears throat> I, I felt like I sharded. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, telling you guys what's coming up uh, in the near future. Next week, we will be at IWC. It's IWC 18. Uh, huge event. I say, unfortunately, I will not be there, but other people, what, what, won't the English professor be there? Yeah, the English professor and Soup and the kids will all be there. So uh, we will be bringing you another recap show next Sunday. We have our normal show. On Wednesday, our Raw Smackdown, da 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 da, just us bantering, drinking lots of beer show. And then this week, we have a special uh, Can Crusher Spotlight. Guys, if you have not listened to past episodes, I'm not going to leak who it is. But let me tell you, she's an elite player. Oh, did you get it? Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, it was a bit of a stretch, but you made it work. It worked. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> this will be the last time you hear Colin on the show because remember, Colin, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's a, called a garbage can. A garbage, not a garbage cannot. Not a garbage cannot. Guys, thanks to Imagine Wrestling. We love yeah, you. Say, thank you for a great show. Please, you know, when they come back May 18th, I believe it is. It um, is. Please. Go see them. They will blow your mind. And also, if you have a chance, see Fighting With My Family in theaters right now. Don't forget Fast Lanes tonight, guys. Oh, yeah, I forgot.